Hello there. Welcome to the program that sets at bridging the gap between countries in trade, culture, and tourism, diplomatic ties. I'm your host, Juanita Ehimiagi. A three-man delegation arrived in Nigeria from Jamaica on bilateral grounds. Where and why did they come? We shall learn all on our segment within the borders. From Africa to America. Asia, Europe, Australia, within the borders, within the borders. Let's take this conversation with the High Commissioner of Jamaica to Nigeria, His Excellency Mr. John Clark. Well, thank you very much, Juanita. Jamaica values its relations with Nigeria, particularly in the context of South-South cooperation. Um, this is both at the bilateral and the multilateral levels. Bilateral in terms of the sharing and learning from each other in our experiences. And multilateral level in terms of collaboration in attempting to influence the shaping of the global environment in a way that is favorable to our needs as developing countries. And Nigeria is very important in this regard because as the largest economy in Africa, the most populous country in Africa, and a regional leader, um, it is of strategic importance to us in Jamaica's connection with the African continent and in wider South-South cooperation. So we therefore are delighted to be able to witness the forging of new links the strengthening of ties at the institutional level between an institution in Jamaica, the Caribbean Maritime University, and counterpart entities in Nigeria. This is a very exciting time for us, and we are happy to be able to witness this and to be able to facilitate this visit of the delegation from the Caribbean Maritime University. Human capacity development is of great importance for both our countries mm. as we strive to empower our citizens to achieve their fullest potential. Well said. The president of the CMU informs us that they would sign an MOU with the vice president of Nigeria with the Maritime National University. Well, thank you very much. I'm Fritz Pinock, the president of the Caribbean Maritime University. We're here to strengthen the ties, to sign memorandum of understanding with four institutions. And most importantly, with your vice president of the Republic of Nigeria, we'll sign an MOU with the National Maritime University, Delta State. This is very important for us because, as His Excellency said, it's about strengthening that South-South cooperation. Because normally we tend to look to the West you know, we look to the, the other countries, but we have learned common things. And one thing that Jamaica and Nigeria share in common is our resilience as a people. And we have a lot to offer as a Caribbean Maritime University. We are the first public specialized university in the Caribbean. We carry the highest international accreditation. So we're here to leverage this with the Nigerian population. And we believe this is going to be a win-win. We are big in technology and innovation where we have done our maritime programs we have up to the highest level where we train captains chief engineers on the largest commercial ships and we know nigeria has its own share that more nigerians can take part in the higher level of the industry so this is what we're here to do it's about sharing that joint certification we have engineering we bring automation mechatronics all the new areas of engineering robotics artificial intelligence pneumatics hydraulics you name them all of these that we're here to leave with so it's going to be an exciting time for jamaica and nigeria and we are very much excited we visited the nigerian maritime university and we were so excited at okirin coco delta Okere state coco. yes <laughs> okay in delta state <laughs> the names are a little bit difficult for me to pronounce but the deputy president of the CMU is a Nigerian, Professor Ibrahim Ajaguna. 
He was one of the three man delegation and he is based in Jamaica. He is the other voice in the conversation. I want to thank His Excellency the Pro Chancellor, His Excellency um, the Timmy Prey Silver, the, 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 former, the, the governor. former governor oh, Bias. of Bayasa. He was there. Yes, he traveled, with us. he traveled with us, and I can tell he's an amazing human being. And I want to say Nigeria has a gem in him, and believe me, he is really, really fantastic. And also the the Vice Chancellor, Chancellor yeah. Professor Itubu, Itubu of, this is of the this university. university. We are sharing curricula with them, you know, to open up new areas up to even the PhD level. Hmm. So, you know, it's about how do we empower Nigerian nationals, not just Nigerians, but we see this institution as serving the entire West Africa. People coming from across demand in this part of, because at the Caribbean Maritime University, we have students from West Africa. We have students from Nigeria, we have students from all across the world. So it's about helping to globalize this institution. So it's an exciting time for us and for Nigeria. The program is Diplomatic Ties on 92.9 Capital FM in the stables of Radio Nigeria. Why the maritime collaboration? If I may just say, from several spheres, let me just start from the United Nations. One of the big areas that the UN recognizes, we know one of the greatest challenges we are facing as a world is climate change. And if you look, 75% of the world is covered by water, both the oceans and the freshwater space. So we're talking about 75% of the globe. That's right. And you cannot ignore that Definitely. because it's a greatest risk. And in fact, the United Nations have now come to be focusing on what they call the blue economy, mm -hmm. which has to do with the whole oceans and rivers and lakes. We also have a center of excellence for the blue economy. In fact, it's headed by... From a German ambassador to Jamaica, who was also a former ambassador from Germany to Nigeria. He served here for five years. He's now the head of that center. So he's very excited about our trip here. In fact, he's now in another African country and uh, he's there right now representing us. So it's an exciting time if you look at it. The world where we're at is no longer countries competing with countries, but global supply chains competing with global supply mm -hmm. chains. Mm -hmm. So we're now in that fourth industrial revolution. How do you empower global supply chains? And the maritime is a backbone where 90% of world trade takes place by sea, by volume. So you can no longer ignore this. It's most important. We represent that space. It's so, about how do we empower our human resource to actually take advantage of that new space. So, and then it means the four institutions you're going to visit now will be in these uh, areas like Delta, Cross River, Rivers. Well, it's not in areas. It's just the institutions. And the others are mainly for programs. But the biggest one is with the Nigerian National Maritime University. Where are the others? Uh, the University of Lagos, mm -hmm. Ondo State University of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. Those are the three we are signing during this uh, visit. Only three. Only three, this right. visit. And going forward, there is also the Adekule Adjacent University in Ondo State, where we're going to be collaborating in the areas of logistics, port management, because that state also borders the coast mm -hmm. of the Atlantic, mm -hmm. which presents a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And let me quickly add to the question you had the president earlier on. Mm -hmm about a why maritime. That's right. Yes. Nigeria is the fifth largest producer of oil okay. in the world. Okay. Yes. I must say it is unfortunate to know that Nigeria has not embraced maritime culture, maritime training over the years. Now we are seeing the first national maritime university just opened seven months ago. In which, Nigeria. In Nigeria, which would have opened 50 years ago. Mm. Nigeria has a lot of unemployed youths. We know that. A lot of Such unemployed youth. But there is a big opportunity in the maritime area. Why are we not embracing that? Good. To train these youth so that they can take on jobs. Good. We send the tankers out of the country every year. What is the population of Nigerians that are employed on these uh, tankers? So that is where this collaboration is very important. What you're telling us now is this collaboration is in the nearest future going to create job opportunities. Create job opportunities. How are you going to do that? The, because we are providing skills that is never tapped into in this area. As the president explained earlier on, we are not into the traditional university programs. Okay. Sociology, psychology, you train and nobody is employing those people. So we are going to new skill areas. What the whole world needs now mm -hmm. is maritime, mm -hmm. tourism. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is big in tourism, but... I don't see what the country is doing with uh, tourism. The largest segment of the tourism industry now is cruising. Look at the coast of West Africa. 
down to South Africa, down to East Africa. Why are we not promoting a cruising? That is a big cruising. cruising. Wow. Cruise tourism. So we are that expecting is, you to start it now. That is part of the collaboration I'll with see. the union. I want to cruise. Oh. You want to cruise? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you are asking how soon? Yeah. It started uh, months back. Okay, what that's we are, why we are here. You that is advertise. why. That is why you, you are here. Advertise. We believe that this is going to be big for this country. Hmm. And yes. and again, to you ask, it's about the approach. We have a problem in Jamaica, and it's no different from Nigeria. Just from my own research. 70% of the training by your higher education has to do with training for social science and liberal arts. People with these degrees, and these are not aligned to jobs. Our approach is we work backwards from the university. We go to the job market, find out where the needs are, then we work backwards to create the training program. So in the Caribbean, we have the highest rate of employment of our graduates within six months after graduation, which is 89% compared to an average of 40% with the rest of the university. So our approach here to work with your esteemed vice president of your country and you know uh, his excellencies is to shift that paradigm in how can we now promote the jobs of the future. And even in the maritime industry, how can we just see Nigerians just working in the hull of the ship cleaning and doing their just the base work, but we want more Nigerian captains and chief engineers so to get much. the higher higher part of the pie. Wow. So this is what we're here, how to help to change that game. Thank you so much. Uh, and I must tell you that the few Nigerians that attended our university in Thank Jamaica, you. that they are doing excellently well mm. because they have a type of job mm. where your monthly earning is your monthly savings. Wow. Because they work on ships where you don't have to pay for food, you don't have to pay for accommodation, and they travel the world yeah. free. We are talking of trained sailors. Beautiful. You know it. You know it more than we do. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so you can imagine we're talking about two, three persons now. Now, let us create this skill, this training for hundreds of Nigerians. That would be nice. And especially in the Delta area yeah. where they have the money, but the money does not reach the local people. This next speaker sat quietly all the time. But now it's time for him to speak. My name is Balfour Peart. I'm a doctoral student with uh, the Caribbean Maritime University. I represent the future. Wow. I represent reverse engineering. I represent coming from the industry back to the classroom. This is what the Caribbean Maritime University does. It creates opportunity with the global infrastructure, the global market space being rapidly changing. This is what's happening. This is where the common Nigerian can be beneficial. This is a space in which the common Nigerian can collaborate with the common Jamaican, the common global citizen. This represents a change in the landscape for Nigeria. This is what I'm here. Yeah. I'm here to show collaboration. I'm here to solicit collaboration. Okay. I'm here to show the people of Nigeria that there's hope. Oh, yeah. I'm here to show the people of Nigeria that we can do things all together. We are global citizens. And this is what the Caribbean Maritime University presents through innovation, through technology, and through its view of the whole world. Mm. I'm a businessman. I operate in the United States, but also in Jamaica. Oh. Are you going to be coming every time from the United States to give lectures? Well, as necessary, yes. I will do that because yeah, going to be business, organizing or yes, attending business for I'll be also. organizing, I'll be attending, I'll be showing, I'll be sharing, I will be collaborating, I will be here, I will be very visible here. I'll let you know that um, our radio station is very open to promote you, just make use of our advertising section. Okay. We would uh, announce your coming and your programs because in advertising, people will get to know about your forums, mm -hmm. about your seminars. They would attend. They will know more of you. Yes, because yes. We, as is, we are involved in uh, logistics, and logistics has taken a whole new meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just the traditional way. So it's, it involves uh, manufacturing. It involves the, um, the movements of goods and services in all different ways. Of course, the maritime industries, the aircraft. We're involved in uh, human uh, tissue transplants. We're involved in the aircraft industry. I really appreciate your coming. Thank you for honoring us. And uh, we wish our two countries better, stronger, sweeter bilateral ties. Definitely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That was it for the conversation, dear listener. We certainly wish our two countries well in their relationships. 
and our gratitude goes to the High Commissioner of Jamaica to Nigeria, Mr. John Clark, for being our guest on today's edition of Diplomatic Ties. Remember to join us every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Dear listener, for a fresh edition. I'm Juanita Ehimiagi. Be a friend for love.